Hi, this is Kathy. In this video, I'm going to show you the basics of Google Sheets. This is what a Google Sheet looks like. It's a spreadsheet, and it looks similar to Microsoft Excel, and it acts similar, but it's not quite as powerful. At the top, you have a place for the file name. Before you give the sheet a name, it is titled Untitled Spreadsheet. And then you have a menu bar, and some of these menu options you've seen before in Google Docs. Google Sheets has a data option that Google Docs doesn't have. Over here, this is what I use to check the revision history, and I use that when I grade your papers. Then you have a toolbar right here, and some of these buttons you've seen before, some may be new to you because they pertain to Google Sheets. For instance, here's a dollar sign, percent sign, this is what you use to decrease decimal places or increase decimal places. And these are additional number formats. This is the font, size, bold, italics, strike through. This is your font color. And this is your fill color. In Google Docs, those two buttons were combined. This is the borders button. Merge cells, this is grayed out because we don't have multiple cells selected that we could merge. OK, here's your alignment button. So you've got your left, center, and right. Uh, so this is horizontal alignment. This is vertical alignment. And this is text wrapping. Insert a link, insert a comment, insert a chart, add a filter. These are functions right here, which you'll learn about in the class. This is the formula bars. And when you type something in a cell, when you click in a cell, the cell contents displays in this formula bar. Then right here, you'll see that these are columns. Your columns are lettered. So here's column A, column B, column C, etc. And your rows, which are horizontal, are numbered. There's row 1, row 2, row 3, etc. Down here you have the sheets. I actually renamed this. It was sheet 1 before. Let me click here to add a new sheet. This is sheet 3. So to delete a sheet, you click the arrow and you click delete. And then to rename a sheet, you click the arrow and you choose rename. You can even give your sheet tab a color. You see the color down here. So this blue bar, that's the color I chose for the sheet tab. The intersection of a row and a column is called a cell address. So for instance, I clicked in this cell. Notice how the B um, backgrounds look gray. That means that's selected. And this is row 4 that's selected. So the cell address is B4. If I click over here, that cell address is D2. To create a new spreadsheet when you have Google Sheets open, click File, click New, and then click Spreadsheet. On the File menu, you can open a, an existing sheet. You can rename your sheet. You can make a copy. You can import something. You can download this as an Excel file, PDF file. Those are the two formats that you would probably use when you want to download a sheet into another format. When you're in your drive and you want to make a new sheet, click New, Google Sheets, and a new sheet will appear. To type data in a cell, you simply click on the cell. To type inventory item in cell A1, you just click in cell A1 and you type the text and press Enter. If you want to go to cell B1, you can press the tab key or the right arrow. The tab key or the right arrow moves you next cell to the right, or enter usually moves you one cell down, and the down arrow does the same thing. Notice that all these items in column A are text, and notice they're all lined up at the left side of the cell. When you type text in a cell, it's automatically lined up at the left side of the cell. When you type a number in a cell, it's lined up at the right side of the cell. So these are all numbers here. And in column C, except in row 1, you have dates. To Google Sheets, a date is a number. So these dates are lined up on the right side of the cell. And then in column D, you have numbers. And these are formatted with dollar signs. So you could format your numbers in a variety of ways. It's easy to insert a row or column when you have data already in there. So let's say you wanted to add a row right here, right above kitchen table. So you could right click. I right clicked on that row indicator. And I can choose insert one, that means one row, above or below. So I'm going to say above. And there's the row. I'm going to click undo, which is up here. Now if I wanted to do that from the menu bar, 
I can come up to the insert option and say insert row above. And you can do the same thing with a column. You can right click on the column indicator. So that would be where the letter is. In this case, it was letter C. Let's say I want to insert one column to the right. I would click there and the column will be inserted. I also can click insert column to the left or right and do it from the menu bar. When you'd like to edit something in a cell, you just click in the cell. And if you start typing, what you type will replace this. So if I double click in the cell, I can move the insertion point in the cell. Let's say I want that to say chairs and press enter. And let's say that I want couch to say cushion. If I just start typing over it, see how the original text disappears? If you want to change the quantity on a number, you can just click in the cell and type the new number. If you'd like to delete a row, you can right click on the row indicator and choose delete row. Clear row would clear out the data in the row. And if you want to delete a column, right click on the column indicator and choose delete column. You can hide the column too. You might find that helpful if you are working with some of the columns but not all of them and then you can unhide it later. You can resize your columns, you can sort them, uh, give them a name. Now what happens when you delete something in a cell? I'm going to delete this number 200. I'm just going to click in the cell and press delete. Now I'm going to type a new number in there. I'm going to type 300. Now there's the 300. When I press enter, notice that there's a dollar sign there. When you press delete to delete something from a cell, it doesn't delete the formatting. So the dollar sign remained there, which was good in this case. To clear formatting from text, there's the clear formatting option on the format tab. So let me change this text color to red. And if I want to clear that, format, clear formatting. Unfortunately, they don't have that option to clear the formatting of the numbers. You'd have to do that manually. If I want to choose a different format, notice how these are formatted with dollar signs with no decimal places. I can come over here and then it gives me some formats here. This is a number format. This is a financial. When it's in parentheses, that means it's a negative number. This is currency with two decimal places. Okay, so that puts two decimal places right here. And if I want to get rid of those decimal places, instead of reformatting or you know, finding the number format here, I would use this one, decrease decimal places. If I want to look at other formats, I would click this arrow. And if I can't find my option here, I click more formats. And since I'm working with currency in this column, I would click more currencies. And see how there's a dollar sign here? And it gives you an example of a currency format with two decimal places. You can click the down arrow, and you can choose a format there. Or you can look for something in this list. And it will format whatever cell or cells you have selected. To select cells, just put your mouse. I like to put it right in the middle of a cell. Click and drag. So I'm dragging down. When you're working with sheets, you may hear the word range used a lot. For instance, this sheet, there's data typed in cells A1 through D8. That would be the range. And you see it, it would look something like this. A1 colon D8. So that's the range. You can select a range with your mouse or the keyboard. So with your mouse, you would stop, start in the first cell in the column and drag down, or you could start at the bottom and drag up. On your keyboard, you would either click in the first cell or the last cell. So I'm in the first cell. Hold down your shift key along with the down and right arrows to select the text. Or you could start in the last cell and use the shift key along with the up and left arrows to select the text. So if you just wanted to select cells B1 and B2, just drag down like that. If you want to select cells C3 through D3 with your keyboard, hold down the shift key and just move the arrow once. Those are some examples of how to select a range. OK, now let's talk about formatting cells. So again, this is text, and all this text is lined up at the left side of the cell. What do you want to center something? Let's say you want all these headings to be centered. Select the range and come over here and then click the alignment. I'm choosing center. And if you'd like to give it a background color, here's the fill color and choose the color. Now if you choose a dark color, you'd want to choose light text. See how bad that looks? So I'm going to choose light text. And it's always best to click off of it to deselect it 
That way you can see what it truly looks like. So that's how you do formatting in cells. You can also change the font size from the toolbar and apply bold or italics, etc. Because I made the text larger, the text no longer fits nicely in column A. So if I just come to this border between columns A and B, when you see the double-headed arrow, I can hold down my mouse and drag to resize it manually, or I can double-click it when I see that double-headed arrow, and that will resize it with best fit. If I'd like to add a bottom border below the titles in row 1, I would select those, so I'm going to point the mouse to cell A1, drag my mouse over through D1, and here's the borders button. So if I choose this, it's going to put a border around each cell. I want a bottom border, so I click the down arrow to see my options. And this is graphical, so I want this bottom border right here. I'm going to click off of it. Last, let's talk about the printing options. I'm going to click File, Print. And you have lots of options here. You can print the current sheet. Right now we only have one sheet, but your sheet could have op more than one sheet. If it had multiple sheets and you want to print all, you would choose that one. Um, if you wanted to print just a portion of a sheet, you would select it, and then you could choose Selection. If you had one sheet, but a lot of data, possible that your sheet would print on multiple pages, you'd want to perhaps repeat the row headings on each page. That's, that's what that's for. And you can include sheet names, page numbers, etc. Here's for the paper size. And here's the width. Fit to width. Click print, and it will show me a preview. Down here it says fit to page. You can't really see how this will work with this particular sheet because everything already fits. But if the rows and columns exceeded the page, Google Sheets would make it fit on a page. Sometimes your sheet is wider than it is long. In those cases, you would want to choose Landscape. So this is what it looks like formatted in Landscape Orientation, and I'll show you what it looks like formatted in Portrait Orientation. File Print and Portrait. So there's portrait. Do you, do you see how now it looks like it's on a piece of a paper, portrait size? And the other example, it was landscape, so it was longer than it was taller. It doesn't really matter in this instance whether you print it on, uh, in portrait or landscape. Have a great week.